I'm at the um, Association of Charitable Foundations seminar on using social media with Peter Wanless, Chief Executive of the Big Lottery Fund. And Peter, you've been talking here to charitable foundations about how they might use social media in their work. So what are some of the key themes that you think have come out today? Well, I wanted to convince people that it's really not all that complicated. I stumbled into social media. I tried to convince people, and it is true, that I'm not an especially IT savvy person, and I'm actually not that social. Um, but uh, the ability to have conversations with anyone and everyone who is interested in what you're interested in and challenges what you're interested in. I think social media is a platform which is second to none when it comes to really kind of stimulating and engaging on topics of importance, either to you as an individual or to you as a professional. So I was trying to convince people to give it a go, to stick a toe in the water or to, to dive in and just participate. I always think organisations that provide funding can always find stories to tell and I think that's what engages people. I mean, and certainly in the work that you do with the Big Lottery, I mean, there are lots of stories out there yes. that need to be spread more widely. Yes, I told a story about um, one of my staff who went to visit a project which happened to be about um, uh, self-harming teenagers and, and offering support for that and she came back and sent me an email to say how impressed she'd been by that project with a link to their website and I had a look and I thought that is very impressive um, so I tweeted a link to the website that was then picked up by a celebrity and once she had uh, tweeted it then all sorts of people got to hear about the fantastic work of that organisation. In the past, um, my member of staff would have written a very nice write-up and in her grant management report, it would have been filed away somewhere um, uh, in a filing cabinet somewhere in Newcastle or Birmingham and maybe in three years' time we'd have written an evaluation which it would have made a small part of. So that excitement, that enthusiasm, the immediacy, the insight, driving people to the cause um, very powerful social media. I think some people are making the case here that they were quite small organisations and find it difficult yes. to find the time to do this sort of thing. I mean, have you got any tips on yes. that? Yes. Um, well, personally, um, the time that I spend on social media is the time that I spend on trains. So if you live in and around London, what else are you doing while you're commuting? Um, we are a relatively large organisation, so I do have a communications and marketing department and a head of new media. We can structure these things um, uh, in a more... Uh, thorough way perhaps than smaller organisations but the simple things of having a Facebook page, participating in debate on Twitter, uploading to Flickr photographs you take when you go out and visit projects, um, filming on your phone uh, little clips of projects when you visit them and putting them onto YouTube and linking those things up that honestly is not difficult. Now, I've learned how to do some of that from my 10-year-old son. So um, uh, I'm saying to them in a way, you know, trust me, there are some basic things you can do without that broader um, capability that give you access to you know, mass audiences and people who are extremely interested in what you're up to. And they're more likely to be extremely interested in what you're up to if you show some interest in what they're doing. I think you're like me, you sort of stumble into this. And I think one of the things that people are, are very aware of is making mistakes in public. And I think, yes. I, I don't know what you think about how you can get over that fear people have of being seen to make mistakes. Yeah, <laughs> um, it is a challenge. I mean, in a way, I'm fortunate. I don't always say this in having spent about 20 years in government where you learn what is appropriate and what is not appropriate to say um, publicly. And that does take... Um, some time. Having said that, there are a couple of tweets that I've made that I regret, and you have to, you know, get over it and uh, uh, and, uh, and apologise. Um, but there is, there are no right answers really to uh, to all of this. It's a conversation, and uh, we all speak to one another all the time. And sometimes we say things we didn't mean to say, or something comes out wrong, and it's not the fault of the social media platform uh, that that happens, it's just it's rather a sort of public place. But if you say something that's not quite right, you won't be the first person to do it. And a lot of um, 
the philosophy of social media, which I really like, is about transparency. It's about breaking down um, barriers. It's about being accountable and explaining and, and justifying you um, what you're up to and why. You know, a lot of people have a lot more understanding and appreciation of what the Big Lottery Fund does when they realise the level of oversubscription and the pressure there is on our good cause cash and some of the difficult choices we have to make about where to fund and, 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 and why and it puts pressure on us to be able to explain that but it also builds a much stronger bed of appreciation of their operating context that would be the case if we just communicated with one another in formal press releases and statements to the media. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much.